welcome back to Robertson's Belly Acres. It's Tidbit Tuesday. So um, today, I think what we're going to cover is sewing basics, just because, um, you know, I come from an era of home ec classes and um, moms that, you know, had time to teach you some of the things that um, you may need later in life. And so um, I know that there's like a very limited access to home ec classes now. And um, it really kind of hurts my heart a little because uh, I think some of those things are very, very important in uh, growing and learning how to do things, just um, simple stuff. So today we're going to cover uh, very, very basic stuff. So, you know, if you are a novice or, you know, uh, a pro at sewing, this is not the video for you. This is going to be talking about wrong sides versus right sides. I mean, when I think about someone who doesn't know anything about um, sewing, watching a YouTube video or uh, looking it up, trying to follow a pattern or something that it says put wrong sides together or put right sides together, and they have no idea what that means. <laughs> so. Um, I know that could be frustrating. So today, um, my mom is actually going to join me because um, she's my number one teacher. And then I had um, home ec as well in high school a million years ago when we rode dinosaurs to school. So um, to, uh, we're going to go ahead and um, get started. I want to cover a few things. Um, wrong sides versus right sides in material or salvage edges. I want to cover um, how to thread a, a sewing machine, how to thread a bobbin, and the basics of running one of those. And then my mom is going to cover um, hand stitching. She's a lot better at it than I am. I, I use the sewing machine a lot. <laughs> um, and uh, possibly, if we have time, we'll, we'll learn how to sew a button on. But let's do some very basic stuff, okay? Okay, you guys, this beautiful woman is my mama. <laughs> she is amazing, and she has taught me how to do so much. And so today she is going to teach how to hand stitch. She's starting with um, uh, threading her needle. Um, yeah, I can see it ending up not missed. I'm missing it. <laughs> They're hard to see. Yeah. It's like that... Um, you want single stitch or double stitch? You're the teacher. You yeah, teach okay. us what to do. Okay. What would you cut off? I know. I can't see. Julia <laughs> 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 <Joyo> was blind. <laughs> oh. There we go. All right, the hard part's done, right? Yeah. Threading the needle. Threading the needle is the hardest. And you put both of them together, and you make a little knot on the end. Okay. okay. This. See, I made the little knot. All right. Okay, then you get your material, and you put it make a little little pouch or something put them together um, right like, right side together mm -hmm. okay. Just put your needle through here Just keep going with it can you see mm -hmm. So you can do this. See? Get three of them oh, at a time. Yep. Yeah. Get three stitches at a time. See? So it kind of saves you a little bit of time. Yeah. Like this. 
just make sure they're the, about the same size they drew. See? See? Yeah. Do they look good? Yeah, that looks great. <laughs> Save time that way. That's perfect. <laughs> My mom was half blind and she loved to sew. <laughs> With, she loved to stitch like this. Aww. All she would ask is somebody put the thread in the needle and she would go to town sewing. <laughs> oh, that is awesome. <laughs> It was her hobby, huh? Yeah, I guess it was because she loved to sew. And you worked at a sewing factory at Yes, one, I so. did. I worked at a sewing factory. I was sewing gussets on the soldiers' shirts. Oh. Mm. So like on the sleeves? Yes, on the sleeves. Yeah. That uh, is so awesome. Do you remember what year that was? Mm. Cookie was a baby. So he was born in 67. Better have been about 68 or 69. 68 or 69. That's so cool. Yeah, that's where I was working at the sewing factory. Sewing. Military uniforms. I mean, what an honor. That's awesome. Yeah. And so did y'all have, um, like everybody just did their one little part? Oh, yeah. I had the gussets. Somebody else puts the sleeves and somebody puts the, the little cuffs. Mm -hmm. And somebody put needle, uh, the, the buttons on the shirt. Once when they got all the way to the end, the one that was putting the buttons on it, it was the last one. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was It was a big old place, and it started from the back to the front. <laughs> so they would just get their part done and move it to the next yeah. table. They had a, a boy. Mm -hmm. They had a, several boys. Okay, you finish your bundle, and you would put it on the side, mm -hmm. and the boy would come and get your bundle. And give it to the other person that's going to do the other thing. And then another boy would pick it up and take it to the other person. You just get wow. those bundles, you know. So did you have like a quota you had to meet yes, every day? Yes, we did. We all did. And sometimes if you stayed behind, they'd get somebody to come and help you catch up, you mm -hmm. know. But, um, yeah, we had a quota that we had to meet every day. We... It was me, my mother-in-law, my sister-in-law, and uh, my other sister-in-law. And she was married to my brother-in-law, you know. Mm -hmm. So she, they, we were all working at the same place. That's incredible. Yeah. That's really cool. So was it hard to meet your quotas, or did you? Yes, it was, because uh, there was some that were faster than the others. Uh-huh. So. Were, so when they bring your bundle... You had to hurry and make that bundle and send it around, send it so that nobody would stop, you know, that everybody would uh, just keep going. So you got uh, your little... Then, here's my little, like a little pillow, little pocket, or whatever you want to make out of it. See, See that's perfect. The sides are together. Mm -hmm. and then there's the wrong side. So you turn it. And you got the right side, and you don't see the seams on it. Right, so that hides the seams. Yes, that hides the seams. And there you go. Perfect little pocket. Yep, perfect little pocket. Oh, right. that's really cute. <laughs> we can make something really cute out of that. That's awesome. So there it is on how to hand stitch yes. and a good little story to go with it. Um, uh, look at how uniform those hand stitches are. I, I've always struggled with hand stitching uh, to keep them uniform, but mom, mom does it really well. So um, 
yeah, by getting those right sides together to start with, you don't see the um, seams when you get done. Mm -hmm. Okay, you guys, that was um, hand stitching with my mom and a great story to go with. Uh, my mom's stories are awesome because she has lived such an amazing life. And um, if we had more time, we would definitely just sit and let mom talk, I promise. Um, so she touched on right side and wrong side. Um, right now she's working on something. She's going to go ahead and finish what she started. And then we'll show that at the end of the video <laughs> uh, with that little pouch that she made. Um, she touched on right side versus wrong side. So let's talk about uh, material and right side versus wrong side. So it's the simplest thing on printed material where the print is, is the right side. The side that is not printed on is the wrong side. So most of the time you're going to go right sides together because you want, just like mom showed, you want that seam to be on the inside when you flip it inside out. Same goes if you're putting two different kinds of colors, two different kinds of material together. If you went with this material and this material, you would put right sides together. So let's look at this. Right side, wrong side. Right side, wrong side. Oh, we got a couple more. Okay, right side, wrong side. And there we go. I've just got pieces of stuff, that fabric where I've used um, to do other different things, right side and wrong side. Okay, now let's talk about um, some of the solid colors, like if you have muslin or um, solid colors, these are a little bit harder to spot right side and wrong side. So um, rule of thumb, the uh, shiny side, shinier side is going to be the right side the duller side is going to be the wrong side. So right side, wrong side. So you really got to kind of look at these to, to be able to tell because it's, it's not a printed material so much. Okay, let's talk about salvaged edges. Sounds really complicated. It's not. Salvaged edge is where the machine when um, they were when they uh, put these on a on a bulk or on a a bolt is what it's called, but it's a a big roll. It's the end of it, so you can tell a salvaged edge um, because sometimes they have holes in them, like where it, it was on the machine, or sometimes it has uh, sometimes it's a different color, um, but it is a very finished edge. Like you can tell, if you look real close, this, oop, see if we can focus here. This is the side that has been cut, that I've cut with uh, my roller, uh, with my little um, cutter. This side is not cut. So if you look at it, you have to always cut your salvaged edges off because they're never going to be exactly straight or even, and most of the time you want things square. So you're, if you look at this, you can kind of see how it kind of goes out. Let's look at a fat quarter that um, that way you can see an actual salvaged edge on when it's um, on a printed material. So again, recap, right side, wrong side. Okay, a fat quarter, when you hear people say, I'm just using a fat quarter, and actually, I'm not using a fat quarter here. This is a, um, I think this is two yards that I bought. But a fat quarter just means it is estimate of a quarter, a quarter of a yard. So you can buy those at Walmart or some of the places that you can just buy a quarter of a yard. And honestly, a quarter of a yard is a lot of material. I do buy um, these in two yards a lot because I do a lot of different things with the same material. Okay, back to this is a salvaged edge. So this one, it's very easy to spot the salvaged edge. It's going to have numbers on it and um, the the um, company where it's from, or it's this one just says uh, sold for non-commercial home use only. Anyway, and see, if you look real close, you can see the little holes in it. Um, this is the salvaged edge, and you always want to cut that off. So. 
that's material 101 um, wrong sides and right sides and salvaged edges so let's move on to the next topic we're just kind of going through it really fast if you have any questions on any of it and I'm moving too fast just um, put it in the comments and I will either make another video or I'll just comment right back to you um, just uh, ask away no question is a dumb question because believe me we all have to learn somewhere so and there are several things I don't know anything about and I ask a lot of dumb questions to a lot of people but I've always been lucky that people just answer my questions and that's what I want to do to do for other people okay guys let's talk about the sewing machine um, this is a brother sewing machine it is a $99 sewing machine from Walmart I don't have anything fancy um, just because what I do, I don't need anything fancy. Um, there are some great ones. There's mama again. She's working on her project. Woo! <laughs> um, so let's just talk about a basic sewing machine and what all the parts are to start with. Okay. So, um, this is where you will roll your bobbin. This is a bobbin. This bobbin goes in this little uh, cavity there and I'll show you more on that here in a second okay this is this knob right here controls the tension of your thread this knob right here controls the uh, pattern of your your stitch so this this one has 17 different stitches um, including a buttonhole maker so you know you this is just going to control that so you turn it to the corresponding number okay this right here is what moves your needle up and down. So when you turn this, it moves your needle up and down. Right here is your sewing needle. This piece is called your foot. There are different feet, I guess. There are different types of feet for different things. A zipper foot, a regular foot, it's just all different Button kinds. Hole. Button holer foot, yes. And then this, let's see if we can get in here and show that. Okay, this little lever right here, it pushes your foot down to hold your material in place and picks it up. So that just holds your material as you're going, okay? Okay, and this down here is called the throat plate, or also called the feed dogs right here. So if you look, there's little uh, grooves on it. I'm trying to get it. Okay, there you go. What that does is that helps pull the material through as you're um, sewing. So it's pulling your material through, and I'll show that here in just a second. Um, this over here, kind it shows... Um, measurements on what like you hear them talk about seam allowances so if you're giving it a half inch seam allowance you want to line up your material right here or three eighths of an inch or five eighths or a quarter or one inch and then these are just it just goes on from there uh, most of the time if I want a very very small inch like an like I mean seam allowance like an eighth of an inch I just line my material up right here with um, that little groove there okay so this little cavity like I said holds the um, the bobbin and I am going to show how to put thread on a bobbin okay that's what I'll show first then we will follow the step-by-step -step instructions that are usually printed on your um, sewing machine on how to thread the sewing machine and then I'm going to use two different colors. I am going to use this navy blue and this very light baby blue to show how the stitches work once you get them in there because it takes both to be able to make the stitch work. Okay. And also, a lot of your machines have this great little cutter on the end as well. So if you look right there, that's just a little... Um, a uh, razor blade and you can use that razor blade to cut your um, threads so as you're sewing and this right here is your reverse button and I'll show how that works once we get some material in there but you push this down so when you're sewing you sew then you push this down and that backs that reverses it 
also most of your um, sewing machines are they're going to have a little light so when you turn it off the light goes off turn it on the light comes on and believe you me when you get my age that light is all the difference in the world <laughs> okay and last but not least here is the pedal and the pedal just goes plugged into your machine and when you run, when you push down on the pedal, it makes your sewing machine go work. So see how this is spinning? It's hard to see it. And then see how that needle's going up and down? And it's just like driving a car. The, far, the harder you press, the faster it goes. Okay guys, so like I said, I'm going to do this one this bobbin with this thread, but when we sew, we'll use this one with this thread. Okay, so this right here is your bobbin, uh, where your bobbin is going to go. And if you look right here, it has this little barb or this little um, uh, little piece of wire that kind of holds your bobbin on. Because otherwise, if you didn't have anything to hold it on, it would end up flying off in the middle of it and it would just be crazy. Okay, so we're, when you put this on here, you clip it. See, let's see if you can hear that. Okay, it's clicked in, okay? This right here is what's gonna hold your thread on. You wanna make sure it's extended because again, if it's down, your, your um, spool is just gonna continue to fly off. So, there we go, it's extended. Okay, if you look right here, it shows you exactly how to um, thread it to, to be able to get your bobbin to go. So what it's saying is the thread needs to come this way. So you want to put your, your spool on that little spool holder just like that. Again, make sure it's extended. Oops, sorry. Okay. And then you're going to bring it over here. And if you see, it's going through there. And then you're going to crisscross it. So you bring it around that little button on top, straight over here. Okay, your diagram shows that you should thread this through there. I don't do that. I thread it, I just hold on to it. But if we're gonna do it for there, that sake, you can thread it. Okay, you guys, this is why I don't do it because I have a hard enough time threading things. Okay, okay, so it's through there, it's tight, it's gonna hold on. Okay, so you're ready to rock push and roll. It, push it to the... So, now that you're ready, you've got all the thread in there, you're ready to go. You're going to push this bobbin all the way over till it clicks. Click. What that does is it disables your needle here. So, now watch when I press the deal. When I press that, your needle does not go up and down anymore. Okay? So, and when I did that, what happened was it started to thread that bobbin. So here we go. That All that does when you click it over is disable your needle, okay? So here you go. See how that thread is going up and down, up and down? Because it's threading your bobbin evenly, okay? So you just go until you get enough thread on that bobbin that you need. Um, if you're doing a big project, of course you want to fill the bobbin. You don't want it to go all the way out uh, past this because it will get uh, jammed up in the bobbin cavity. So, there we go. Now, you take some little scissors and you just clip it wherever you need to. Click it back so that we're engaging the needle again and take that off of there. Okay? That is how you thread a bobbin. Okay, now that you have that bobbin threaded, let's go ahead and thread the machine. How's the heat? Okay, so again, up here on the on the machine, it shows you step by step. One, two, three, four is up here. Five is down here. So five steps to thread this machine. Okay. So you leave your thread, your spool of thread, right there on that. You're going to bring this, again, you're gonna clip it in there like you did a while ago. You just pull that. You're gonna come down, cause that says two, three. It has a little arrow that goes up like this. Let's see if you can see that. 
see that little arrow so you're going to go around that okay number four if you look up here number four shows this little hook here so you're thinking what am i hooking that onto you see that little metal thing in there you're going to bring this back and it hooked right on there did you see that let's do that again now look we go on that side of the little metal thing and we bring it around now it's hooked on that metal thing okay then we're going to go to number five which is threading the needle this is the best part for me let me tell you because I cannot see so main thing is you want this thread to go through the little eye of the needle so I always cut it off so I have a fresh edge push my foot down because I want to be able to have as much room as possible and then honestly I'm stabbing in the dark over here <laughs> get it lined up I've got my needle threaded okay okay so you see the little groove in your um, foot right there we're going to put that thread through that foot and pull it back your thread always needs to be back behind your material because your material is going to go in this direction so you want your thread behind you okay and you always want the thread underneath the foot okay guys so now threading the bob or we've threaded the bobbin so now we're going to install the bobbin we have our um, needle threaded so we're going to install our bobbin if you look over here you will see the um, that it shows you the right way and the wrong way to install your bobbin so first you're just going to remove the cap from the uh, cavity I am so sorry about my nails you guys we work so hard I don't think about them till I'm doing a video I should have painted them but I didn't <laughs> okay so here we're going to use this um, uh, baby blue a thread so that we can kind of see what what's happening with the thread afterwards uh, after we start sewing so if you look here you know you want your bob your thread going this direction see how it's going there it's going here so we're going to drop that in Doop, just drops right in and then there is a little spot right there that you want the thread to go over see how it shows that you want the thread to go there every one of these is different like mom just said hers is different her bobbin is on the side um, so I always just kind of use my finger to just kind of push that to go right underneath that little metal part okay so you pull that this way and get enough thread you want enough uh, thread so that you, this this top thread can pick it up okay so now you're gonna grab your other tail and this is why I use two different colors so you can see I'm grabbing the navy blue tail so that we can pick up this baby blue in the bottom so now what you're going to do is you're going to turn your knob over here which is going to um, operate your needle remember okay so we just turn the knob towards ourselves all the way down and bring it back up and look at that it grabbed a hold of the thread on the bottom okay and for some reason we got stuck okay so we grabbed the thread on the bottom oops I missed it oh no there it is okay so this is hard to see so I'm gonna take this foot off so well I can't take the foot off I want to pick this foot up so you can kind of see that see how this thread is picking up that little blue right there so I'm going to use this and pull that blue out further so you can see it so basically that navy blue pulled the baby blue right out of there and that's what you want you want two tails and one is coming from the bobbin end and one is coming from your needle okay so there you have it your machine is completely threaded now you just push that back on let it clip and we are ready to sew okay 
guys, so I'm just going to use a little scrap piece of uh, material to show you um, how this is going to work. I'm putting it on a seven um, stitch just because that is a, a, a pretty, excuse me, standard stitch. And I have it on a seven um, tension because on my machine, a seven tension is, is actually pretty good. Okay, and that tension goes from zero all the way up to nine, I believe. Yeah, so we don't want it too too tight. And you'll know from your stitch if you have it too tight. Okay, so I am going to put, I hope you're saying it before I say it, but right sides together, okay? Because we want to hide the stitch, okay? So we're going right sides together. We have it threaded, and you see the, the navy blue that's threaded through the needle and the baby blue that's threaded through the uh, bobbin, okay? So I'm going to do a 3 8 inch um, uh, seam allowance. So I'm going to put that there and it, it's going to sit on the throat plate or the um, little dogs there that are going to pull it through. Okay, you'll see how that works. So I'm going to press my pedal and when you're first starting out, Press the pedal very slow. Pretend like you're learning to drive and you're driving very, very slow in that parking lot. So press it slow so then that way you make sure your, you are, uh, your um, thread is going straight and you want to keep it right there with that three eighths. When you start, when you start a, a uh, seam, you always want to push the reverse and if you look down here, what that is going to do is that is going to back your needle up, see? And you always do that so that you are um, making sure that that thread is going to stay. It's not going to come out. So, so we sew. Always keep your fingers out of this area. You would be surprised how many people sew their finger. Because here's the thing, if you forget to put that plate down, it's still going to move and you're going to catch your finger. So make sure that plate is down and you want to sew. And when you get to the end, before you get all the way to end, reverse it again and then finish it off. Okay, so now we're finished. We're going to flip that little foot up. We're going to pull these and right there on that little um, cutter, you're just going to cut it, okay? Then all you have is one side to come back and cut. So now let's look at this stitch, okay? Let's look, get a close look at this stitch. If you see on the top, you're only seeing this navy blue, okay? But on the bottom, you're going to see that baby blue that's coming through, okay? That's because those two threads are working together to form your stitch. So if you have everything threaded correctly, you're going to get a nice stitch on both sides and that's what you want, okay? Then when you fold this out, it's just like that, um, that stitch that mom made a while ago, you don't see your seams. See, your seams are hidden. Um, here on the ends, you can pull that little seam out. Oop. There we go. Perfect little seam. And it's not going to come out because you backstitched and you don't see your seam at all. So that, it, that makes a really good um, first time sewing with a sewing machine. Okay, okay guys, so... Um, that ends our tutorial on hand stitching um, and right sides and wrong sides, a little bit of 101 on material and um, how to thread a, a sewing machine and how to do a, a simple stitch on a sewing machine. Um, Mom is going to show us what she did with that little pouch that she was hand stitching. So she, she finished it out and uh, hand stitched it, so she's going to show us what she did. Okay, I made a little hem. Here, you want to hold it up here? I made a little hem on it, like that. And then I put a little ribbon through it. And then you just pull it and make a little pouch to 
put peppery on potpourri on it. Potpourri, yeah. And make a little pretty little bow. She had it bowed really mm -hmm. pretty. Let's get that little bow. Perfect. There you go. So there it is. There's the little pouch. A it? little pouch with a pretty little bow and it is all hand stitched. Um, and you can put drop some potpourri in there and it's a cute little pouch. Um, again, you guys, again, you guys, that is all hand stitched. So, I mean, you don't have to have a uh, sewing machine to be able to do some really cute stuff. Um, mom showed us that right away. <laughs> um, mom used to make us clothes and things when we were kids and um, she was always so creative with it and sometimes there wasn't a sewing machine or something and she could hand stitch things. So it's a really good, very important um, thing to learn. It's a, it's a good survival uh, tip. Yes. So thank you to mom for coming and, and sharing her wisdom with us and her stories with <laughs> us. <laughs> and uh, anyway, that's it for Tidbit, Tidbit Tuesday. Um, if you guys like... Uh, like this kind of thing or if you have any questions or anything just please comment uh subscribe hit the like button um uh hit the bell so that you get a uh, notification when we're on and you know share with your friends so anyway till next time god bless god bless bye <laughs>